So now I'm going to do the shorter response software development questions. Again, as is quite common, a bit like the binary question, uh, we've got a question about agile versus iterative. That's come up a few times near the start of the exam. So we used to describe how evaluation differs. We're not just describing the differences in general between agile and iterative. Specifically, it's about evaluation. So how that differs in agile compared to an iterative methodology? Well, you would talk about what is evaluation like in agile versus what is evaluation like in iterative. So in agile, evaluation is ongoing. So if I say evaluation is ongoing throughout the process of the software development process. You're evaluating as you go. Iterative is not like that. Iterative has a separate evaluation stage. Evaluation only takes place in this discrete stage at the end. So it only takes place in, in a stage at the end after testing. So that's actually quite an easy thing for two marks. Um, you might not have seen it as two separate points that you're making there, but it is. So you're saying what it's like in Agile and what it's like in Iterative. So then we've got a, a four mark standard algorithm question. We've got an array called surnames and it contains a list of surnames. So it's going to be a, an array of strings using the design technique. So we're not looking for specific code here, but although you could answer theoretically in another design technique, really you should want to answer something like this in pseudocode it's going to make your life much easier you're much less, less likely to get mixed up then you're going to design an algorithm to find the number of characters in the longest surname the only thing that jumps out to me that, that might be a misconception here is if you're saying something about finding the number of characters people might jump to counting them and therefore think it's a count occurrence algorithm it's not if it's the longest surname then it's a fine maximum so it's a fine max algorithm now, if I've got maybe uh, a variable name that I might call something like max length, I could set it to the length of the first one in the list. In actual fact, if it's a list of surnames, the worst that could happen is that um, if they were all blank, they would all the length of zero, then that would still be the maximum. So because it's maximum, not minimum, I could set it to a zero to start off with. So I could set that to zero. So set max length to zero. I could also do this with position and I could say that the the position of the maximum one was zero and then update the position as I go through the loop but I'm going to do it just recording the length. Then we would loop through each one so if I said loop for each surname Then we check, is the length of the current surname greater than the maximum? Now, it's going to have to be the length of it. It's not the value of the surname because it's not a number. Um, you couldn't say, is you know, the name Smith greater than the name Mackay? Because that doesn't make any sense. So, if the length, or, you know, even if you said Len, if it's obvious what you're talking about, you'd be fine. If the length of the current surname is greater than max length, then you're updating and you're setting a new maximum. So you set max length to the length of the current surname. You could probably see that I'm a Python programmer here. Um, I suppose I could say that I'm ending my F and ending my loop, but I'm not going to lose marks over something like that. And that's my straightforward four mark uh, count cons. Uh, and that's my straightforward four mark find max algorithm. So then this is the last one of the, the short response questions. Although it takes up a full page, 
It's actually only two very short questions down the bottom. It's mostly code that we've got to read. So it says the prime number is only divisible by one in itself. The first five prime numbers are shown below. There's code below to check if a number is prime. Now I've highlighted line 7 and line 43 because these are in the questions. So using a programming language of your choice, write the code for line 7. So let's see what line 7 is. It says, if the remainder of n divided by divisor is equal to 0. So I've underlined the variable names there because we're going to have to use those. Now we see remainder. Remainder means that it's a mod function, which in Python, which is the language I'm using, is a percentage sign. It's nothing to do with percentages. It's just that that's the symbol that we use. So if n mod divisor equals zero, that's my line of code, because I'm dividing it and I'm getting the remainder when n is divided by divisor. Then using a programming language of your choice, we to write the code for line 43. So line 43, it's doing three things. It's setting is prime. So we're going to have is prime equals, because that's what we're setting the value of. So is prime equals, and then we have to call a function check prime. So check prime and let's look at that function. So when we find the check prime function up here on line one, see it takes one parameter, it's an integer. So to identify if input number is prime or not, input number is going to be the parameter. So check prime input number. It's not n because n would be the formal parameter. So that's the formal up here. But the actual parameter can have any name because it's just a variable we're passing in or a literal value. So it's not going to have the same name. So that's the actual parameter there. And it becomes the actual parameter that we're passing in here.